I've just carried one of the heaviest food loads I've ever carried deep into the backcountry. So at least one of these better turn out because it would be a shame to spoil this view. If that doesn't look appetizing, I don't know what does it. The infamous ramen bomb. You've seen it, you've tried it, you loved it, you hate it. No matter the case, in this video, we're talking ramen bomb done five ways differently. If you guys thought I was crazy for bringing a whole can of spam out last time, wait till you see this time. Okay, bottoms up. Oh, yep, nope, nope. I'm glad that one was last. Wait, why was this one last? Hey everyone, welcome to Backcountry Forward. My name is Jesse, and on this channel, we believe the backcountry is for everyone. So I do my best to offer the tips and tools to get backpackers backpacking and keep them moving forward. Now I'm gonna get straight to the point. When I put out my last ramen bomb video, I was inundated with so many different suggestions and responses that I just had to give something a try. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Five suggestions that I thought sounded intriguing. Now, one of the things that I got called out so much on was the fact that I did not use real spam. Instead, I used holiday luncheon meat. Um, I had no idea that there was anything different between the two. One was just cheaper than the other, so I grabbed it. So. First things first, I'm gonna use real Spam. I'm gonna fry it up. I don't actually have a frying pan, so I just gotta use the lid of my cook kit. And I'm gonna fry it up and make a traditional ramen bomb, but I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. Okay, with the Spam in place, I mean, just reheating my water a little bit. The biggest thing that I heard from everyone was spicy. So I got Taco Bell hot sauce packets as well as chili flakes and everyone suggested some sort of cheese flavored chips so i've got nacho doritos that we're gonna all put into the mix here to spice things up okay so we've got some piping hot water here just add that to the bag. I've learned from doing this now a couple times just to kind of wing it. Basically, you want to cover everything and then mix. Now, this is a freezer bag, um, just a mini size freezer bag. If you want to see how you can make your own size freezer bags, you can check out the link in the cards. I did a video all about DIY freezer bags. A few moments later. Okay, spicy ramen bomb, first flavor. Honestly, wow, not bad, not bad. Okay, the Doritos really make it, but okay, I can't spoil my ap appetite. I still got more coming. Okay, the next two that I have on the list, I owe to my good buddy, Maddie from Maddie Outdoors. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. He goes to some amazing places here in Canada and has some awesome gear videos as well. And this one I'm choosing to call the Eau de Canada Putin Bomb. And poutine is a classic Canadian dish here in Canada. It's basically French fries, gravy, and cheese curds. So I've got mashed potatoes, ramen, real cheese curds, because in Canada, poutine is such a big deal. You can basically get it at fast food restaurants. So I just went to McDonald's, asked for a poutine, but cheese curds on the side. But if you don't have access to cheese curds, you could also use a mini Baybell. They'll work just fine. And whoop. There goes my boiling water. And then you want some gravy. And of course, this is Canada, people. We have bacon. That's right. Okay, so, so I'm going to cut up my bacon. So I've got my bacon cut up and put in here a quarter of a packet of gravy because it's a small one and we're gonna go a full packet of cheese curds because it's Canada. And add boiling water. It's definitely boiling. Seal the bag. Mix it well. Mmm, smells like Canada. Okay. Eau de Canada Poutine Bomb. Ooh, cheesy.
Mmm. That was amazing. Moving right along. The next one I've got is again thanks to Matty. He doesn't like spam and a lot of people didn't like spam. So this is called the jerk bomb or the explosive jerk. I haven't decided yet. Basically instead of spam, you use beef jerky. Now I've already got that cut up and inside, but I've also added something that everyone else kept requesting or suggesting, which was dehydrated vegetables. They, their biggest complaint was the nutrition of this meal, which I mean, it's, it's, I never once said it was a nutritious meal. So we've got dehydrated vegetables, jerky, and if you really wanted to spice this one up, you could also add some mini bagels or some cheese to it. Um, I mean, really, whatever you'd like. I'm just using Jack Link's jerky. I mean, really, you could just go with whatever favorite jerky you've got. And um, yeah, it's been a little bit. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, looks like a ramen bomb. What I'm really curious about is whether or not the vegetables will have rehydrated. Mmm. Mmm. Also using beef ramen for the first time. Interesting. Yeah. The vegetables did not rehydrate. So you really have to make this with like the ramen first, the vegetables first, then add the potatoes, then add the beef. Honestly, the jerky just isn't flavorful enough. The spam is so flavorful that you really get that kick of flavor, but eh. Thanks, Maddie, for the suggestions, and let's keep moving. Okay, if you guys think I was crazy for bringing out a whole can of spam, wait till you see what's next. This one I'm calling the Beef Boss Bomb, and it's the boss, because it requires corned beef, baby. And what's corned beef without a can of corn? <laughs> yeah, I did that. So. Here's what it is. It's the typical ramen and mashed potatoes. Then you're gonna add one packet of butter just for an extra flavor kick because you're the boss. Why not? Then, sharp cheddar. I mean, really any cheese will do. This was just sharp cheddar that I got. I'm really excited for this because it's actually one of my favorite types of cheddar. Mix that in there. How's this gonna taste? I don't know. The last one, I'm actually really worried about. I think I know, I think I do know how it's gonna taste and it's not gonna be good. Okay, corned beef. <clears throat> Whew, okay, corned beef is really hard to open. Boom, there it is. Gross, it looks really, really gross. Now, this stuff, I don't know if you can actually get in single packages, so somebody will have to tell me. Then, one eternity later, If that doesn't look appetizing, I don't know what does it. Hmm. Smells buttery. That's the butter. Okay. I'm gonna try to get a piece of cheese, a piece of corn. Corn adds a really interesting texture. I like it. I like the corn. I don't think I like anything else. The cheese is good, but the cheese would be good in just about anything. Okay, last but not least, the one that I am most the one that I am most worried about. If you guys thought I was crazy for bringing a can of Spam, a can of corn, and a can of corned beef, it just gets crazier. Okay, like I said, the one that I am least looking forward to. I'm calling this Sea Bomb Chowder. It's mashed potatoes, dehydrated vegetables, which I already have learned don't work unless you rehydrate them first. And I was going to add a cream soup mix into the mix, but those all had to be simmered according to the instructions and I didn't want to risk it. So instead, I just added two heaping spoons of dehydrated milk powder. And you might be wondering, 
well, what makes this seafood? Well, a lot of people suggested tuna. So we've got a, tan, a can of tuna here. We're just gonna add, not the whole thing, but a few good chunks. Now, I don't mind tuna. I don't mind tuna. But I also brought a can of, oh, gross. You guessed it. Oh, this was actually a pretty common suggestion and I don't know why. Oh, gross. Oh, it's just breaking apart. So I'm just gonna add some sardines. I think sardines, I think it's just more of a mind over matter thing. That's what I'm choosing to tell myself. Nope, tastes like sardines. Okay, so add the boiling water. Okay, so I've let this one sit a little bit longer so that everything gets rehydrated, hopefully better, and mostly because I was procrastinating. It doesn't smell that bad. It doesn't smell pleasant, but um, okay, bottoms up. Oh, yep, nope, nope. I'm glad that one was last. Wait, why was this one last? Oh, this one should not have been last. I want something else. If you like sardines, it's probably not that bad. The tuna, like the first taste that I got was just tuna. I was like, oh, that's not that bad. And then I tasted the sardines. Tastes a bit creamier, but I can't really notice the milk. So, meh. I'd give this a meh. So which of the five will I be finishing tonight and which ones would I do again? Well, I have the sea bomb chowder, the beef boss bomb, the jerk bomb or explosive jerk, the la poutine au de Canada, and spicy spam. Drum roll, please. Oh yeah, it's a tie. The spicy spam was really good actually, but the poutine bomb, oh, those cheese curds, the gooiness, the gravy, the bacon. Thank you, Maddie. I will definitely be having this more often. And the spicy really kicked it up a notch. Maybe it was the spam that didn't taste like hot dogs or maybe it was just the spiciness. The Doritos also added a really interesting flavor. So I'd make both of these on the trail again. I like them. Now, if you want to see some of the other crazy meals I've made out here in the backcountry, you can check out this playlist here of some of the other backcountry menu items I normally take out. If you want to see how to make your own DIY Ziploc bag, you can check this video out right there. But either way, keep moving forward.